Welcome to the first part of Lesson 3-2. This video will cover the product and quotient rules, which are more advanced techniques for taking advanced derivatives. Now, in principle, for the first part of this course, every derivative we take can be done just using algebra and the basic rules covered in Lesson 2-5. However, we're going to want to be able to do these things faster and more reliably. So we have these two rules. This one's for the product of two functions. Notice how f and g are two separate functions with a dot representing multiplication between them. That'll become really important in less than 3 3 And when there we have a quotient of functions, where again, f and g are separated by a division line or f and g are two parts of a fraction. So when we're taking the derivative of two functions being multiplied together, we will use the first function, f, times the derivative of g, plus the second function, g, times the derivative of the first function, f. That's what f and s here stand for. First times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Just a really important rule to memorize here. The quotient rule is much more complicated here. It involves g times f prime minus f times g prime, all divided by g of x squared. Not g prime, notice that this is not g prime. Some people go by top and bottom. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom function squared. The way I was taught growing up, the way it's helpful to memorize, the way I still say it every time in my head, good or bad, it's low d high minus high d low all over low squared and away we go where low means the bottom function the low function high means the high function and d stands for derivative so this trick is not helpful if you don't know what these three mean. Low d high, the derivative of f, minus high f times the derivative of low g, all over low, original low function squared. Okay. Before we move on, I will say it's important, very important, so important I'm gonna write it in red, Don't use product or quotient rule when one part is a constant. So 5x squared, I'm not going to use the product rule here even though I have 5 times x squared. Does that make sense? I hope it does. We have <clears throat> way too much work just to do a derivative we were doing in lesson 2-5 just fine. Not a product rule situation, you'd be wasting your time to use the product rule. More commonly, students end up wasting their time when they have something like this. They see the quotient and they just go crazy. But again, I would rewrite this one first as five times x to the negative two, and then you're cooking with gas again. Similar example, slightly different. 
not a quotient rule situation. Rewrite it. So the main takeaway here is to rewrite, this is just the same thing we've been talking about ever since 2-5, rewrite if possible first. Okay, sometimes it won't be possible. A lot of the times it will be. Please be careful. These all are much easier to do without these two rules. You will kill your score. You will really hurt yourself if you don't learn how to use the basic rules to do these three functions. Without further ado, let's look at functions we actually want to use this for. Now, for this first function, I thought we'd start off with a problem that doesn't really require the product rule. You could FOIL it all together and do just as well. But here's how the product rule will work. So I'm going to do the product rule. This is like method one. F prime. Notice how I'm labeling it. So I'll have this guy be my green function. Oof. Can't cover inside the lines. And this guy will be my blue function. So first, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of 2x plus 3 is just 2. I hope you're getting good at seeing that by now. This is a line. This is the equation of a line. The slope of that line is just 2. That's one way to think of it. Or just following the rules. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 3 is 0. Plus, the second function Notice how this is the same exact function, not the derivative, the exact copy of the first function times the derivative of the second of the first function. This is the second function, original second function, times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of this function, 6x to the first, we won't write that plus the derivative of negative two, which is just zero. Okay? Now, the reason to use the product rule is that we're done here. This is my final answer. And it should be fast, it should be reliable, it should be good. If you're not being able to do that quickly, you are not doing the product rule for the right reason. I'm gonna show you how this simplifies because we're gonna do it with the other method in a second. Minus 4 plus, make sure we're distributing to both. So our hypothesis is that this is giving us the same exact answer as our old method where we would have to just FOIL it all out. So let's investigate if that hypothesis is true. Method 2. With no PR, no product rule. Instead, we have to rewrite the function first using FOIL or distribution. 6x cubed plus 9x squared minus 4x minus 6. And then we would get f prime just using the basic rules now. 3 times 6, 18. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times 9, also 18. 2 minus 1 is 1. You don't write the 1. Derivative of 4x is 4. Negative. Because the slope of 9, negative 4x is negative 4. And we see these match. Now, if you're really strong with foiling, this is probably just as fast as this. But the point is, in many examples, this will be faster. The product rule will be the only game in town. Next. Quotient rule. I know it's the quotient rule because there's no way to simplify this. One of these is not just the number. 
So I look at this guy, that'll be my top, my high function, and this will be my low function. Now over here we have y, so when I go to label my answer, I'm gonna to have to use the derivative of y, y prime. We could also use dy dx. So we will have low, the exact same low function, copy, it's the exact copy, times the derivative of this high function. Two times two, decrease the power by one, done. Derivative of three is zero, okay. Minus high, so the exact copy of the high function word for word, letter for letter, symbol for symbol, times the derivative of the low function. Derivative of two is zero. Derivative of negative three x is negative three. Again, you could look at that as a line. What's the slope of that line? Negative three. All over low squared. And by low squared, we mean the original low function squared. And we're done. Away we go. No need to simplify that. If you're going to distribute, make sure you distribute the negative to all three. I would distribute this guy from the right first. But I'm not going to simplify that. I don't have to. Be careful. The quotient rule requires that you pay attention to which is which. Low, d high. High, d low. They're connected with minus, so it really matters. All right, now here's another example where we have two cases. If you followed my advice before, it's really important rewrite first. Why? Because that gives us a faster answer. So y equals negative 9 fifths x to the negative 2. And with y so written, I'll change it up and use the notation dy dx. Negative 2 times negative 9 fifths is positive 18 fifths x cubed. x to the negative 3. I'm so sorry. x to the negative 3. You know, I'll rewrite it just to punish myself. x to the negative 3. And if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to, I could rewrite that. But I'm done. On the other hand, here's what would happen if you didn't follow my advice. We'd have to use the quotient rule. So method two, and I'm only writing this to show you how it would work and how you still get the right answer, but it just takes twice as long. Low, d high. So what's the derivative of negative nine? Zero. Whenever you're getting a zero and you're using the quotient rule or the product rule, it's a sign that you're wasting your time. Minus high, d low. What's the derivative of five x squared? It's 10 x. 2 times 5, decrease the power by 1. Before I go on, let me mention, writing those two negative signs next to each other is very hard for students to do successfully. Most of us have a terrible person in our brain that says, no, you're good. Don't write two negative signs next to each other. That's silly. Let's just change this to a plus right now. And then that looks ugly, first of all. Second of all, a lot of people just don't write one of these negative signs and then they don't get the credit, which is not correct. 
all over low squared. Now here's another example. Most students don't work as carefully as I am now and forget to do squared squared. So, A, this is harder to work with. B, it has many more error possibilities. So please don't do it this way. Just to show you we're not being crazy, crazy. Like I'm not totally irrational about this. I understand the appeal. You do get the same answer. You have to learn this anyway. I guess I'll just do it this way. This is way slower. And speed does matter in this class. So, go try out some problems. Go look at the book. Go try some problems out. Good luck. Have a nice day.